So it was self-compassion, but not to the point where you let it, you let yourself completely off the hook from stepping out of your comfort zone. That is a tricky balance, one that I cannot paint a picture of what that looks like perfectly. Only you can decide what that is. And really what it comes from is experience, is experience, ex, you know, experiencing going from one extreme to the other. So self-compassion, self-compassion, self-compassion. <laughs> This is your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode number 300. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This is number 300. I am so excited because I get to talk to you. That's number one. Number two, that I'm doing a giveaway to celebrate not only our 300th episode, but this week, I don't know what day it is. I should probably figure out what day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this week marks the ninth anniversary of Your Kick-Ass Life. I launched the website and officially kicked off my own sort of soiree into the business of being a life coach and you know doing it all online. I had been doing it for a couple of years, but I officially launched the brand that is Your Kick-Ass Life this week nine years ago. And the really the only reason I know that it's this week is because I knew that it was the week after my daughter turned one and she just turned 10. So I sent out my first newsletter and I remember feeling so excited, but yet so nervous. I'm like, what do I say? Here's a picture of my daughter (laughs) on her birthday, (laughs) on her first birthday, looking so adorably cute and smiley, chubby face. And I'll never forget it. I Back then, y'all, I had, I mean, I knew what I was doing because I knew I was following my heart, but I, from a strategy point of view, I didn't know what I was doing. I knew that I just wanted to connect with other women that were like me. I knew that there had to be other people that had a heartbreaking story like mine that also found so much joy in their life and also struggled and had challenges. And am I doing this right? And how do I be the best person I can possibly be? And I found you. Look, there you are listening to this podcast 300 episodes later. So back to the giveaway. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep it simple. I am giving away your Kick-Ass Life tote bags, and these are not for sale in stores. You cannot buy these anywhere. I gave them away to my patrons a couple of months ago. There's going to be a picture of one from the fabulous Karina with a picture of hers from, from Patreon, and it's a really cute tote bag. You can use it as a grocery bag. I like to have books in it, snacks. I carry snacks in these kinds of bags. And it says your kickasslife.com on it. I think they're really cute. I'm giving away five. And all you have to do is leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Wait a minute. If you've already done it, if you're over there shouting, I already did this, Andrea. I want to, I want to have one of your tote bags. Send us a screenshot. Email us a screenshot to support at your kickasslife.com with giveaway in the subject line, if you will. And the other way to do it is just, Leave your rating and review. Oh, and by the way, in the show notes, we're putting a very short video tutorial on how to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts because they don't make it very easy. I swear. It's infuriating (laughs) for me. (laughs) It's not easy. It's not very intuitive and user-friendly. So if you're kind of stuck on it, go watch that super quick video to be able to do it. Email us a screenshot. So whether you have already left us a rating and review or you are going to do it for the first time, take a screenshot of your rating and review, send it on over to support at yourkickasslife.com. Five winners are going to be chosen at random on Wednesday, October 9th. I'm giving y'all two weeks to do this because I know a lot of you don't listen to this on the day that it comes out. Two weeks to do it. And let's say by 5 p.m. Eastern time on... 
October 9th, 2019, because some of y'all might be listening to this in 2021. But you can still leave me a review if it's in the future and you're listening to this. Thank you so much. All of this information is going to be in the show notes for episode 300, so you can grab it there. And good luck to you. Hey, your chances are pretty good considering my guess is like seven people are going to do it because I have 11 listeners. So I'm I'm thinking like seven of you are going to do it. And your chances are pretty good for me mailing you a Your Kick-Ass Life tote bag. All right. So this episode, y'all, as you may have heard, I have been talking about it almost nonstop (laughs) about (laughs) my book proposal. And for those of you that don't know, book proposals are a slightly complicated, gigantic document that contains the summary of your book that you are about to write, or maybe that you've, for some people, they've already written it. It is who the book is for and plus what magic fairies you're going to conjure up to help you sell the book as well. It contains other things too. But my point is, and the way that I like to describe writing book proposals is it's like that school project you have that is enormously time consuming, super, super boring, a metric shit ton of work. And 99.9% of your grade is writing on this project. Oh, and the class that it's for is like the big enchilada important class. No big deal. You know, it's just like the ultimate important class that you get a good grade on. And as I've mentioned before, this book will be, it's my third book for those of you that are newer to the podcast and might not know. I wrote a book called 52 Ways to Live a Kick-Ass Life that came out in 2012, the very end of 2012 more like January, 2013. I wrote How to Stop Feeling Like Shit. That came out in January of 2018. And this book, title withheld, (laughs) will be slightly different than my first two. It will absolutely still be self-helpy. It will still 100% be written for you, but it will have an edge. It will be more opinionated It will be more in tune with what's going on culturally and politically. And all of this is enormously scary for me as this entire year has been about healing, moving through all sorts of old shit and leveling up. And I think the reason that I am scared is it is a few layers to it. Part of it for sure is the fact that how to stop feeling like shit in measures of success in terms of personal development books has done very well. You know, there are some, uh, you know, Jen Sincero, I, I know her who wrote You Are a Badass and You Are a Badass at Making Money. She's been on the show a couple of times. Her book uh, and, you know, Rachel Hollis's book has done, those are exceptions. <laughs> those are massive exceptions, which have sold millions of copies. So my book hasn't sold millions of copies, but at any rate, it's sold a lot, a a lot to get the attention of editors and, and things like that. So there's that, there's that thing that goes on in our minds that's like, okay, well, how are you going to top that? (laughs) How are you going to at least do just as well? Because anything less than that is going to be a failure, right? This is like the conversation that that goes on in my mind. So I'm feeling a lot of pressure for this book to be better than my last one, to be able to top the numbers. And also it's scary because I'm and this isn't as much, but there's still that fear of losing readers, you know, like the people who might not agree with me that the, you know, the sort of the main theme is like, we need to, and I know a lot of you really loved the episode I did a couple weeks ago with Kara Lowenthal, that we need to heal from the patriarchy, that, that really like the whole system that's been created for us culturally is the root of what makes us feel not good enough, is the root of people pleasing and in many cases codependency it's it's the root of what ha- generally speaking has what what made women feel not enough and of course the patriarchy hurts men too and 
that is kind of what the edge is going to be. And for a lot of people, that's no big deal to write about. And it is a shift from my normal conversation. And it's a slight shift, but it's a shift nonetheless. Because I can I can write your straight up and down, inspirational, motivational self-help all day long, all day long. I can do that in my sleep. In fact, I have another idea for a book that I will probably write after that that is more along those lines. And that's what's easy for me. And and maybe easy isn't the word that I'm looking for. Maybe more so it's that's what I have experience doing. That's what I feel I am an expert at. That's where I feel confident. And I think all of us get into these ruts, right, where we do the thing. Maybe it's in our career or in our friendships or whatever it is. And we get used to being a certain, like, it's our comfort zone. Like that's what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> we, we determine our comfort zone and we stay in that lane because it's safe. And I'm r- currently reading the book Pussy, a reclamation by Mama Gina, who's formerly known as Regina Thomas Hour, who I will get her on this podcast. Like I have to, I got to get through this book first. It came out a couple of years ago. I know many of you probably have already read it. We'll put the link in the show notes because it's, I'm y'all, I'm only on chapter one and it's blowing my socks off. And I recommended it to a couple of friends. I had one friend message me on Facebook and she like the crying emoji. She's like, this, this book is breaking me open. I'm nervous that it's going to forced me to start stirring shit up at home. I was like, girl, we need to talk. But in the introduction, like I haven't even like gotten into chapter one yet when I underlined this one particular line, Mama Gina says, if you want to know where your true power lies, go to those places you've been taught to fear the most. And she's ta- she's talking about she goes on to say your orgasm, your period, labor and birth, menopauses, all processes that involve your pussy. Okay. So that's not what, (laughs) like, yes. And what I'm talking about, you know, the places that I fear the most, I'm actually doing work on that too, more on that later, but the places I fear the most are really being truly and unequivocally outspoken. And that's what this book is. I had a mentor tell me, She said, Andrea, this might be your most dangerous book yet. And I'm like, well, I've only written two other ones. So it's like, I don't have a whole lot to compare it to, but that both excites me and scares the shit out of me at the same time. All right. So back back to the fear. I have a few things that I'm going to jump into where I'm going to tell you what I have been doing to get myself through this process that I think might be helpful for you. And I'm going to read you um, some piece of writing that that I wrote. One of the things that's come up during this whole process is, you know, my, my uh, literary agent whom I love more than life itself. She's been such a great, incredible mentor to me. You know, she's expecting more from me now. The ante has been upped and rightfully so. I've been doing this for several years now and I have declared verbally to her and to the universe that I want to be a career author. Like I am a career author. I want to write books for a living. I want this to be the bulk of where my revenue comes from. I want this to be my legacy. I can do this. So once I declare that to the universe, the universe was like, okay, you sure? (laughs) So I turn over my proposal to her And I knew it was the first draft. As Anne Lamont says, everybody has to write their shitty first draft. And I knew it wasn't done. It absolutely not. I would be horrified to to turn that over to publishers. But it's, you know, this is the process that we have to go through. So it was my first draft. I sent it over to her. And, you know, a few days goes by and I get the email back. And I open the email. (laughs) And I start reading. Who I, the way I describe it, <laughs> here's my version. I got my ass handed to me. Basically, she could have just in the email in all caps said, girl, try again. Like, <laughs> just, just try again. Try harder. No, she didn't say that. She gave me excellent feedback and basically, I mean, everything she said was true. And that's what I, I wasn't sure exactly what was wrong with it, but the way I described it, it was kind of like, meh, it was okay. It was okay. And 
also, I hadn't really sat down to write anything like that in two years, which was a huge mistake. I will not do that again. That is not what career authors do. I hadn't really written. I was rusty. I felt like a baby giraffe trying to walk again. So I knew that it wasn't good and I couldn't put my finger on it. This is why we hand it over to people who are better than us to help us. So I'm reading this email and like I break out into a sweat, you guys, and I had to like push myself back from my desk and like... You know, like when you're playing sports and you have to like put your hands on your knees and like and put your head between your knees and you're like, whoo, that's what I did. And I had to take some deep breaths and I put my hair in a ponytail, literally grabbed an elastic, put my hair in a ponytail and got back to the email because I thought to myself in that moment, I thought, cause I, there, there was that like seven year old kid in me who was like, you're mean. <laughs> I don't like this email, but I. Immediately, I was like, no, this is this is what a professional does. A professional takes feedback. I mean, this is what I have written to you about in my books, about accepting feedback just as feedback. And it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything about me as a writer or as a human being. It just means that I have some improving to do, and here's how to do it. Like, it, it was a map. Did it sting? Of course it did. Absolutely, 100%. So I get my hair in a ponytail, wipe the sweat off my forehead, <laughs> and dove into this email. And I was I was really proud of myself that I could walk through that feedback. And even at the end of the email, she was kind of joking. And she's like, I, I get it if you don't ever want to speak to me again. And I replied immediately. And I was like, this is incredibly helpful. And I so appreciate it. I knew something was wrong with it and I couldn't put my finger on it. And she put, she put like seven fingers on it. She did. She was like, this, 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 and this, this <laughs> needs some improvement. It was my opportunity for growth, right? Remember that? I think I wrote about that in 52 Ways to Live a Kick-Ass Life. Another fucking growth opportunity. It's called an AFCO. There it is. There it was right before me. So in this whole, this was a few weeks ago. So during that whole time, I had gotten some coaching from my dear friend, Courtney Webster, who has been on this podcast. She was, she was on the first season of the recovery series and she's an incredible coach and my friend. And she was lovely enough to coach me on this. And she, we came up with a few exercises for me to do and I did them and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, tell you about one of them, but really here's some other things that I did to help me through this. And I'm going to start from the very beginning because I want this to be helpful for anyone in this situation. And the very, very first step is that you have to know that you're in it. I mean, I know that sounds obvious, right? But you have what I mean specifically by that is not that you are just in this uncomfortable place you need to know that you are in a place of upper limit problems, that you are in a place of leveling up. You are in a place where you are being invited to step out of your comfort zone and into the next level, the next chapter of your life, the next chapter of your personal evolution. So you have to know that you're in it. So some signs to look for are the obvious, like you're entering something new and scary. Maybe you are thinking about applying for a promotion at work. Maybe you're thinking about a complete career shift. Maybe you are thinking about dating again and you've been single for a long time or you've, you've had your heart broken and you're thinking about jumping back in. You also might hear a lot of inner critic chatter, lots of it. And you all know what that sounds like. I don't need to, I don't need to talk about that too much. But those, those are some big signs that you are at the next level of your life. We did a coaching podcast episode a few weeks ago. I will put that in the show notes where I coached a fantastic woman named Rachel who had this exact problem. So if you're kind of ears perking over there, like, oh, okay, what is this upper limit problem you're, you're talking about? Go listen to that. So the first step is like to absolutely positively know that you're in it. Then... And this is something I just do so naturally now because it's I've made it habitual, but I know that this is a struggle for a lot of you listening, is that you need to tell people about it and tell the right people. Tell the right people. Get the support that you need. So don't tell people, and sometimes we don't know until we tell them and then we're like, oh, you're not the right people. And 99% of the time, they're well-meaning They just 
respond with their own fears and discomfort and all the other challenging feelings. But these are, you know, if if your parents have been consistently cautious about you going after career changes or promotions or things like that, then maybe they're not the people to tell. But the people you have in your life, and if you don't have them, please make it a priority to go and find them. The people you have in your life who will cheer you on. Sometimes we need to tell people beforehand, preface the conversation by saying, I'm going to tell you something that might kind of surprise you. And I would love any kind of encouragement that you might have. I know all of the uh, obstacles I might run into. I would love some encouragement. Can I tell you this thing? That's, that's how you preface a conversation. They want to show up for you as best they can. Okay. So the right people, tell the right people, get the support you need. Follow the right people online. This, this also looks like that. Who are the people that are encouraging to you and make you feel motivated and inspired? Not the people who are online who might try to be motivating and inspiring, or maybe they are motivating and inspiring to other people, but they make you feel like shit kind of because you're comparing your life to them. That happens sometimes. Unfollow them, maybe even just temporarily. I have had to unfollow people temporarily because they're super triggering to me. And I always look at that as an invitation to work on my own stuff. I don't make it mean anything about the other person, but I'm just like, that girl is triggering the shit out of me. Like I I need to look at my own stuff and then maybe I can follow you again. That's all. That's really all. Follow the right people online. Get coaching if you can. Coaching can be expensive. I get it. But there are plenty, plenty of new coaches out there who are looking for practice clients, who need those clients for their certifications, who oftentimes will do it for, I don't know, don't quote me on this, but maybe like 20 bucks a session, maybe even for free in some instances. Look for it. Write it in your journal. Declare it to the universe that, that you are open to this. You are open to get some free or low-cost coaching. Or if you can afford it, get some really awesome coaching. Or if you want to become a Patreon, just saying, <laughs> you can get free coaching from me, yourkickasslife.com slash Patreon. Head on over there. Maybe it's therapy that you need to go back to. Old stuff comes up. Happens to me too. Accountability groups are great for this. And... You just find people who, uh, well, I'm, I've had people from my group programs continue their relationships with each other and hold each other accountable, things like that. The other thing that I do during these times is have, have self-compassion, but not to the point where I let myself off the hook. So in other words, it might look like Maybe I've had a really, really difficult day and I had set aside two hours to write that day and I'm like, oh, I had such a hard day. I think I'm just going to skip writing to take care of myself. So here's the thing. I am at the point in my life and I think my own evolution and my own intuition where I know when I'm doing it because I'm being lazy or because I'm scared or if it really truly is... I need to take care of myself. This is legitimately, I need to take care of myself. So when that happens, I do not beat myself up for it. That is self-compassion. So self-compassion also looked like that story I was telling you about the email that came up and all the feedback I was getting. Self-compassion was understanding that that feedback had nothing to do with who I am as a person, who I am as a writer. It really truly was feedback. That's it. And I look at it from the perspective of, this is my ticket to be a better writer, because that's what I want to... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not conceited enough to think that I am like <laughs> the best writer. I have a lot of confidence, but I know there's so much room for improvement. And the fact is that I haven't written for two years. So self-compassion, but not to the point where you let it where you let yourself completely off the hook from stepping out of your comfort zone. That is a tricky balance, one that I cannot paint a picture of what that looks like perfectly. Only you can decide what that is. And really what it comes from is experience, is experience, ex, you know, experiencing going from one extreme to the other. So self-compassion, self-compassion, self-compassion. The last thing I want to talk to you about regarding tools to help you out of your comfort zone is 
writing yourself a letter to fear. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about this. And I decided if it's good enough for Liz, it's good enough for me. She talks about this in the book, Big Magic, which we will put in the show notes as well. It's a great book on creativity. And I am going to read you this letter that I wrote to fear. This was my exercise that my friend Courtney gave me. And it's so funny because I give these kind of exercises to my clients all the time, all the time. And when she gave it to me, I was kind of like, oh, and it, and it truly was. I knew that if I didn't do it right away, I probably wasn't going to do it <laughs> or she was going to ask me about it. I'll tell you, there's something about accountability or that she was going to ask me about it. And I was going to be like, oh shit, I need to do that. And I was, I was going to eventually do it, but I knew procrastination was not going to help me at all. So I sat down maybe the day after she and I had our coaching session and I wrote this letter to fear. So here it goes. Dear fear, I'm not sure why I'm addressing you as dear, as you're hardly dear to me in the least. Let me start with some compassion since you don't necessarily deserve to be yelled at, berated, or chastised. So I get it. I get why you're doing what you're doing. You know, or at least are very certain, that if I write a big book, and by big, I mean with lots of opinions, and with lots of opinions, I mean opinions that millions of women and men also have the same opinions. Oh, the irony. There is a huge risk involved. What if people disagree and write mean things about me on the internet? What if I don't know enough about the topics and I'm criticized for that? But I think the thing that scares you the most is not bad reviews or haters, but the success of this book. With How to Stop Feeling Like Shit doing so well, this book has big shoes to fill. And by big shoes, I mean 100,000 copies in 16 months. A big book advance to prove how worthy my creativity is. Numbers have weight and there are so many numbers to contend with. To you, fear, big numbers equal everything good and right in my life. There are so many what ifs and oh my gods and expectations. I understand your job is to know these backward and forward, to yell, watch out at every turn, every second. And I believe your goal is to convince me to write a book that is so incredibly vanilla that it will be agreeable to all. Or if you really had your wish, I just wouldn't write another book at all. We just leave the party of authorhood with how to stop feeling like shit, blowing kisses to everyone and call it a day. I understand that you are convinced this risk is equivalent to my possible death. Playing Russian roulette with the general public that any failure of this book will not only result in public humiliation, but will be my death. Death from starvation, or being stoned to death by my haters, or death by massive shame, or maybe all three. Trust me, I feel all of this in my marrow. Every day as I sat down to write the proposal for this book, I hear you and feel you. I wring my hands and worry. I make the anguished emoji face. I get GI issues. So we're going to make a deal, you and me. But I need to tell you first that while I get you fear and see your job and even respect and admire your tenacity for doing said job, I have got this. If you remember, I used to sit in my room for hours writing stories from the age of nine. This continued well into my teens, and then for a decade or so, I stopped writing because I lost myself, but that's a letter for another day. But when I picked up writing again, it poured out of me. And for years, this happened, and then I wrote my first book. I actually did it, Fear. Do you remember? You were there so much during that time. We wrestled, you pushed, I pushed back, and in the end... I did it. And we didn't die. In fact, it ended up being fantastic, so fantastic that I did it again. 
And like the good worker you are, always diligently showing up for your shift, on time, with your uniform, clean and pressed, you came back that time. And we made it through again. And that book was fantastic too. Even more so to me because I understood so much more about the creative process, about the publishing journey, about myself, and about you. I have got this because so many times I write things that I don't remember. God is writing through me. She knows what needs to be said, and she whispers it to me. And when you're yelling, it makes it hard for her to be heard. Yeah, yeah, I know you're doing your job, and I'll get to our deal in a minute, but I need you to understand just how much I have got this. This is important. This book wants and needs to be written. There are women out there of all ages who need this clarity, these stories, this advice, and my sense of humor to reach the next level in their life. They have their own fear that's putting the brakes on. And listen, fear, we can have none of that These women are trying to do incredible things, live better lives, be influences on other women, and they can't do that if you're in the way and yelling so loud. So back to our deal. I'm not banishing you or burning you at the stake. You can stay, but if you stay, we have to enlist some boundaries. First and foremost, I am in charge. The boss. The big kahuna. If it's any consolation, seriously, remember, this is our third time at this rodeo. I am fully equipped to be in the driver's seat. Second, since you have permission to come along, there needs to be rules around that. No blabbering, no worst case scenario, no comparison to my previous writing or to other authors. In other words, I need you to maybe at most... Whisper your worries when absolutely necessary. I promise I'll acknowledge you. You can't be in charge, fear. That's the bottom line. I call all the shots and my voice is the loudest, the most important, and the most loving. It has to be. We may need to have future meetings once in a while, and that's fine if you need to give me all of the warnings. I'll hear you out. But that's it. Deal? Deal. Oh, and thanks for keeping me safe all those other times, you know, when I legitimately could have died. You're the best for that. Love, Andrea. All right. So that's my letter to fear. And obviously, when I wrote this, I had absolutely positively no plans to read it publicly. (laughs) So there are some details in there that might look different for yours, you know, if you do decide to do something like this, which I highly encourage you to do. And I I find it extremely helpful. I have read it to myself a few times when I, you know, after I got that email, <laughs> all the feedback. but I find it enormously helpful. Thank you to Elizabeth Gilbert for this exercise. Thank you to my my dear friend Courtney for for giving me the assignment. And thank you all of you for listening and giving me your time today. And I want you to live your biggest, boldest, most badass kick-ass life. A thousand times I do. And with 300 podcast episodes behind us, I salute you. And thank you so much for joining me on this journey, not just this journey of this podcast, but this journey of life. And one of the things I love the most, and I actually put this in my proposal, is the feedback that you have given me is that, is how relatable I am. You know, you and I might have different circumstances. We might have different careers. We might have, you know, live in other parts of the world, be at different ages and stages in our life. But I never wanted to be the type of life coach slash expert slash author slash speaker who made their life look impeccable and only told you about struggles when I was 10 years out. And I I didn't want, I didn't want to do that. That felt really ingenuine. And I wanted, I wanted you all to know that I'm one of you. I am one of you and I might be a few steps ahead and 
it doesn't matter. It just means that you have a path that you can follow. And I hope, I hope, hope, hope that I can give you some tools and some inspiration and some motivation and some high fives and some go girl along the way. Cause I am rooting for you. I am so rooting for you. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave us a rating and review and enter, enter the giveaway to win a tote bag. And until next time, ass kickers, I will see you out in cyberspace. Bye-bye.